Hello and welcome to another video. I think this is going to be the last video I'm going to make on my sky watching series of videos for at least maybe a week. My vacation is now pretty much at an end and I have a new experiment I'd like to run that is based on my sky watching project. Earlier this week, as I was making some of my videos, I had the idea what would a flat earth model look like if it was overlaid on top of the images taken from my video camera. Unfortunately, I have heard globe earthers ask flat earthers repeatedly to provide a working model of the flat earth and they can't. They keep making excuses, they keep repeating the same things that have been proven to be false, and they essentially can't come up with a working model. I've already tried to model the flat earth in a spreadsheet before. I think I'm going to try it again, but I think I'm going to do it this way to not only model the sun, the moon, but to also model the stars. So I made a rough sketch of what it could look like if the earth was flat and all of the stars were above it. And we know that at some point, a star is going to be directly overhead of a particular point on the earth. And Simple trigonometry means that if we look up at 45 degrees, the distance from this point to the point where the star is directly overhead should form a right angle triangle with the other two sides being at 45 degrees. That length and that length should be the same. And we can measure this length. And the way I plan to determine the altitude and azimuth for any given object relative to any observer anywhere, I plan to do it this way. First thing I have to do is I have to map the two coordinates in 3D space. I'm already given the observer's geolocation represented as their latitude and longitude, and I can calculate the star's equivalent geolocation directly overhead doing it this way. Let's pick Subra. Actually, let's, let's pick Regulus. So if I pick Regulus, it's telling me that there is a current declination. It, it's telling me that Regulus is at a current declination of 11.96 degrees. So that is just simply the latitude. Next, if I change my camera's altitude to point directly up at 90 degrees. You can see that at this particular time, Regulus is at an altitude of 86.97 degrees and an azimuth of 89. And if I keep playing around with these numbers, at some point it should be directly overhead, somewhere around there. So at this time, Regulus is directly overhead of this coordinate. Next thing I need to do is if we accept the flat Earth model that the Earth is flat, what about the stars and the sun? How far are they from the Earth? Well, quite simply put, simple geometry, 45 degree angle up. It would mean that to have any object at a 45 degree angle, its distance to the observer has to be 5,000 and four kilometers. That means all objects, the sun, the moon, and all of the stars are on a disc shaped thing at 5,004 kilometers up. So now I have my two three dimensional objects in 3D space. I can use simple trigonometry to calculate any star's position relative to that observer. I can calculate the altitude and the azimuth of any object relative to that observer and then project it onto this as to how it should be displayed if it was viewed through a camera. It'll take me maybe a day or so of coding to allow my application to support both the flat earth and the globe earth, but when I'm done I plan on making a time-lapse video to show how it would look along with a time-lapse video of the objects overlaid on top of what my camera has taken. I think it'll be a rather interesting experiment and we'll see how it's going to work out. Stay tuned. I think the next one is going to be in about a week. 
In the meantime, thanks for watching. I do believe you know what to do, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.